Hi everyone, welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Um, I just wanted to talk a bit about uh, the extruder I've been making for my 3D printer. Um, the extruder has been the hardest part of the 3D printer actually. Um, so uh, yeah, here we go. Um, and the first one I made uh, was rather big and clunky. I used this big uh, stiff motor here. Um, and that, uh, well it worked, um, it kind of fitted on there like that. I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture on. Yeah, see. Um, and yeah, it worked. Um, there was like a pinch roller here which, which pressed the filament against the uh, the knurled uh, gear there. Um, and it was fine, but um, there was a couple of problems. Uh, firstly, um, the, uh, the filament went right through the middle of this assembly here and when it jammed I had to take the entire thing apart to uh, sort it out. And secondly, as you can see, it's really, really heavy which is something I didn't really think about when I was uh, designing and building it. So uh, this is this is the Mark II version I'm uh, developing now, uh, which is rather more advanced. Um, now, so the main problem here is the weight. Um, most of the weight is this, because it's a big lump of iron. So I thought, how could I improve that? Well, I could use a DC motor, a DC servo motor, instead of a stepper motor, and a gearbox. Unfortunately, I have these extremely nice um, gearbox DC motor assemblies. Um, they came from uh, a bit of uh, military surplus hardware. Um, I've got quite a lot of these. Uh, got a whole big bag of them! Awesome! Um, so yeah, I decided I'd try and use them. Uh, the gearbox is uh, very high quality indeed. Um, I'll just take this apart and show you. Uh, the, uh, the motor comes off with three screws. I zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, I think so I have to focus there. It's surprisingly hard taking things apart on camera. little retention ring comes off. And is the uh, the motor uh, complete with a uh, NATO part number which is uh, rather nice 28 volts uh, 7000 rpm uh, the gear uh, cut directly into the uh, spindle little ball bearings at each end and here is the gearbox uh, which is uh, all ball bearings and just spins and spins, which is rather nice, uh, with big fat gears in as well. And you flip these little covers off. Uh, let's get to a uh, zoomed in as much as you can be there. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, all extremely high quality military spec stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Now, uh, there's a problem with that. These motors aren't servo motors, they're just normal motors. So I need uh, some feedback uh, to complete the servo loop, uh, which I have to add. So I've, I've been uh, experimenting, as you may have seen from uh, my pictures on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, I first tried gluing these uh, this, these couple of opto uh, sorry. Uh, um, opto interrupters to the back of the motor with epoxy. Um, I've actually broken one off there. Um, and you can see I cut a little slit in the uh, end of the motor shaft there um, and made a little part which has disappeared completely. Uh, oh, here it is. This I made this little bit of lump on the end, which engages with the slot on there in theory, and it has a little uh, encoder wheel on it. So that would, the theory being, that would fit in there, and as the motor turned, this would turn, and uh, I could get the quadrature signals from the uh, two opto isolators, uh, opto interrupters. That didn't work very well, um, on its own anyway, um, 
it's actually really critical. The the keeping this in alignment is really really critical. Um, I tried. I made a, a little tiny one somewhere, and I tried gluing it, and I tried all sorts of things, and uh, it wasn't awfully uh, awfully successful. So uh, next, I made a second bearing assembly, a second ball bearing assembly to to keep the end of this bit rigid um, as it was spinning. And uh, here it is. I made it up on the lathe. I made it out of uh, a, a bit of laser printer, I think it was, a bit of the uh, uh, fuser system. It was, it was just a bit of tubing with these uh, three uh, wings on the inside and a, a solid bit up the middle. So I uh, turned out the middle and uh, made a little recess for a bearing in there. So this, this can go in there bearing like that and it can spin nicely and this fits over that so I don't know if I can assemble it easily on camera to show you that kind of goes in there and that went in there like that um, it's really surprisingly difficult doing this on camera Yeah, so it went, went like that. Um, this this still didn't work very well, unfortunately. Um, firstly, the uh, the connectors for here shorted out against the metal here. Um, I did think about uh, adding some extra insulation, insulation, but it all got a bit cramped uh, with all the wires. So. Uh, uh, I gave that a miss in the end, um, and the main problem was that the little uh, the little slot the little slot I put in the end of the motor was jamming, and and the assembly wasn't turning freely. So I decided to simplify things a bit. Uh, So another problem with these opto interrupters was getting the angle um, between the two of them correct. Um, a quadrature signal has to uh, output two uh, two phases, one for each interrupter, um, 180 degrees apart, uh, so it can tell which which direction the uh, the spindle is turning. Um, so the angle between these is actually quite critical um, and it's quite a hard thing to do to, to just glue these on particularly when you've got this kind of lump from the rivet there and you don't want to impinge on the uh, on the terminals so uh, I started looking for alternatives to these two and uh, I talk about a mouse because mice have uh, um, that, that sort of optical component in and I found this uh, which is a dual photodiode from the uh, scroll wheel of a Microsoft mouse and this was the uh, the opto interrupter encoder thing um, which went over there like that and as luck would have it there's exactly uh, as many uh, uh, opaque parts on the uh, interrupter as there are on uh, my little transparent uh, acetate interrupters so that's kind of handy. Uh, so yes I shall be uh, using this in the next version to mount through the side of the uh, of the uh, bearing holder um, along with an LED which I have floating around somewhere. Um, so that's going to simplify things somewhat hopefully. Um, I'm also going to abandon this whole idea with a slot maybe just uh, bore the motor spindle out to a two millimeter uh, hole and uh, have a two millimeter shank on the end of this and just glue the thing in maybe with some uh, silicon so it's got a little bit of flex in it uh, so yeah uh, that's that's the plan stay tuned for the uh, next installment 
when uh, hopefully I've got things working a bit better. Thank you guys, see ya.